What's up, y'all? It's Triple E, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Keep my feet up, cause I ain't home. You can tell him put that in stone. Tell him put that in stone. All right, y'all. We got the coolest <laughs> with us off the porch today. Triple E, how are you feeling? Feeling good. Feeling good. Thank y'all for having me. Now, I waited to tell you this before we... Well, I wanted to wait to tell you this while we're in the interview, yeah. but I actually grew up on your music. My oh, dad no. was a youth pastor, so wow. like he would play all of our stuff. So it's yeah. all of your music. So it's super exciting to have you, and we finna get into your story because yeah. I'm super curious. Yeah, yeah. That's dope. <laughs> now, let's talk about... And you, you grew up in Dallas, though? You're like from I'm Dallas? I'm from Dallas, yes. Okay. I'm, oh. Well, I'm from Arlington, but yeah, you know, yeah. like... We yeah, yeah. Dallas. That's dope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yes, um, I want to talk about your The End Projects really quick. I, you don't have to go into full details until afterwards, but... Yeah. Basically, when I saw the title, I thought that this was like... I just looked strictly at the title. Yeah. I thought it was like maybe like a retirement project, like yeah. leaving. So I was like, wait, hold on. Yeah. So I want to talk to talk, want you to talk to us about that title and what it means to you. Yeah. So a lot of people thought that people was like, oh no, trip. And partly because I haven't put out music in in a little bit. Uh, it's been since 2016, my last project. So, uh, but no, nah, I mean, it was for me was I was writing the album and a lot of the songs, a lot of the themes were about stuff that came to an end, whether or not I actually wanted it to. And uh, so it's not like the end, you know, the end of my career, but it is like coming to the end of yourself where you have tried your best, you had these dreams, and you thought this was gonna work out like that or whatever, and it really didn't always work out that way. So, um, so yeah, and I thought, you know, for where a lot of us have been in the last couple of years, where it's been a hard couple of years for yes. basically everybody. <laughs> I was just saying like, I feel like everybody I haven't seen in a while, and I'm like, hey, how you doing? And it begins with, you know what I'm saying? Like, people been through a lot. Last radio station we was at, somebody was just saying like, oh yeah, when COVID hit, then I got laid off and my two friends who work here got laid off. And it's just a lot of that in everybody's life. So I was like, I feel these themes in the music I'm writing and I think it would be dope for, for the project to talk about a lot of that. Um, do you yourself feel like that you're going through a transition? Um, this is actually a season of my life where I am, it is a lot of transition. Like I have been uh, pastoring too. Uh, in Dallas, and uh, I actually just stopped in uh, July just because of uh, just health issues and just hard for, for me to have the energy I, and be able to do it how I wanted to. So it is actually a transition season for me because I've been also pastoring for a long time. And then so now I'm like all the way back on music again. And the inspiration has been there the whole time. But yeah, it is a season of transition for me. Yeah. Wow. So um, I do know that you suffer from chronic fatigue. Yeah, yeah. So for people who don't really understand yeah. what that is, could you explain it? Yeah. And, uh, you know, doctors don't even understand it that well. You know, so f what it looks like for me is uh, my body just doesn't recharge like it's supposed to. So, I, you know, I haven't I don't remember what it's like to wake up, feel rested, you know, on a typical day. Maybe I have a couple good hours. I don't always know when those good hours will be. Um, and so it's very hard to depend on. It's almost like, you know, it's almost like if your phone battery dies, d none of your apps work because everything is running on that battery. And it's like my energy is so up and down, it can make a lot of stuff difficult. So, um, so yeah, so it looks different for different people, but it's, it's been a, a tough thing in my life for the last, almost I think about 15 years at this point. Really, how did you even find out that you had that? So in 2007, so I had always been like, like I'd always been a dude who I didn't like really need a whole bunch of sleep. I, my mom was like this, so I was like a night out and I'd get up and I'd be cool with school, mm -hmm. all of that. And then after my first year of college, um, it was actually also after the first like tour I went on and, um, and I got back to school and I was just like super tired. I didn't know why. And I, in that season, I was like sleeping 18 hours a day and I was still worn out for the time I was even up. So I was like, obviously something's wrong. Long story short, I go to a bunch of doctors, test me for everything else they can think of, and they're like, these symptoms, and it's not these things, it's uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. Basically, nothing we can do for you, just try to eat healthy and live a healthy lifestyle. And so um, it's not, I'm not sleeping 18 hours a day now. It's, it's different in different seasons, but, right. but yeah. Have you tried to take like energy drinks or anything like that, or does it just? Sure, like like stuff like caffeine or mm -hmm. energy drinks, like it can be helpful for a short period. And there's some medication that'll help with some things. So, you know, doctors don't understand it that well though. That's one of the things where it's like, 
I think this is why sometimes people don't even like how the medical system works. Is sometimes it can be like, oh, what, well, here goes some pills. Let me know how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not, but when doctors don't really know what's all going on, you can kind of try to help symptoms, but you can't really address it. So there's a lot of stuff I would try and then it would help for a second and then wouldn't anymore. So it's a journey for me of like trying to figure out what's going on and, and try to get try to get healthy. Yeah. And it's, a, it's hard when you don't, it's easier when something's wrong and you're like, and here's what I know needs to be done to fix it. Mm -hmm. But that's part of what can be hard about it is like, I, this could just be how it always is. And, you know, what does it look like to just try to be as faithful as I can with, you know, what I got? Right. Yeah. So, um, not to switch topics, no, but good. Um, I know, well, correct me if I'm wrong, after yeah. your Unashamed tour, is that when you took a break from making music? So, um, there have been a couple times where I've taken breaks. Mm -hmm. So, one time in 2012, I, t I took a little bit of time off. And then after my last record that came out, Waiting Room, I'd also, it's, it, it wasn't even on purpose though. It was just like, I thought I was gonna come with something sooner and it just, just energy, you know, it just, I had moved from here. I'd been past from here. I moved somewhere else, wondering if that would work better. And yeah, so, so some of those breaks have been unplanned, but it's just kind of how stuff worked out. And during your, uh, the breaks that you took from making music, how do you stay creative and make sure that their creativity never dies? Yeah. Um, I try to be really someone who's really easily inspired so that I try to, I don't want to just be inspired by people who do exactly what I do, just other rappers, though I do get inspiration from other rappers. I want to just get a little bit of inspiration from everywhere. Um, and so I was just telling somebody yesterday, he looked at something, Olivia Rodrigo popped up. I was like, don't tell nobody, don't make fun of me, but she's dope, <laughs> like she's good. She's a good writer, the melodies. If you like to hear, like I like to hear people uh, accurately describe Heartbreak, even if it's over something I don't even really relate to. Like I like dope writing like that to grab mm -hmm. you, and uh, so I try to like when someone's being great, or even like the Kanye doc. Um, super inspired to see kind of where he came from and where he ends up. Um, and uh, I'm a I like making stuff, so I'm always whether or not I'm working on something, trying to make stuff, and I'm producing on this album, which is something I hadn't done in the past, which was also really inspiring for me. I like to learn and try to get better each time. And I get bored by trying to just do what I've already done. I want to do something I haven't done yet. You know, that's, that's more exciting to me. Now getting into the gospel rap genre, how would you even break it down as to what gospel rap really is? Mm, I don't even know how to answer that question, honestly, because, uh, because, you know, like, like I'm a, I'm a rapper, I love hip hop, I love rap, mm -hmm. I'm a Christian, I love Jesus. And so what I rap about in my music is what I love. Um, and so I don't just rap about God, I don't you know, I rap about life. I want everything that I rap about to be from my perspective, but um, I don't know how to talk about it as a genre. You know, so I think over time there are a lot of people who have you know, done Christian hip hop who have really been encouraged by but it's just different. It's almost like a subgenre. It's almost like, I don't know, like people would talk about conscious hip hop before. Or I don't know, like uh, trap music. Or, you know, so there may be like little subgenres within it. Mm -hmm. I guess for some of it, it's, there's a lot of fans who love hearing about, you know, they love hearing music from, from our perspective. It's a soundtrack to their lives in some ways. Other people, it's like, I don't like, I don't rock with nothing gospel or Christian, but your music was kind of an introduction for me. You know, it was a way for me to hear about stuff in a way that was less intimidating. For me, I don't really, um, so people can call it what they want. Like there was a time where people were like, oh, you just a rapper or you a Christian rapper? And I would entertain those questions sometimes like, I'm not just a <laughs> rapper, but, I, but yeah. at the end of the day, people gonna call it whatever they want. And um, I just, uh, my thing is, I just wanna make amazing music. That's what I don't like is when um, people are like, no, I got a message, so I'ma just, you know, as long as it's good, it's fine. And I'm like, if I just want to say true stuff, then I'll just talk. Mm -hmm. But if I'm making music, I want to make the best music I can. I want to push boundaries. I want to make something amazing. So for me, it's like, I just want to make amazing music. Um, and I hope people don't dismiss stuff when they're like, oh, it's gospel rap, it's Christian hip hop. That must just be for them and not for us. And I'm like, I, I'm just trying to make great music. And I try to make it in a way where everybody can relate to it and get something from it. 
Uh, and that's why I feel like you as an artist have such a diverse fan base. Like, you know, the street people can listen to your music. Yeah. Anybody can listen yeah, to your yeah, music. Yeah. I also think that your tone too plays a part because yeah. when, you know, like I told you earlier, my dad like put us onto your music. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was like, you know, some trap. I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, what is this? <laughs> but you know, yeah. I think it was like your tone and your approach and how you really, articulate yourself to where anybody could grasp it, if that makes sense. Yeah, that, that's it, that's the goal too. And, you know, I was talking to somebody earlier and they were like, you know, somebody said it was gospel. And then I heard, and I was like, oh, like, this is good. And this is, this is always what happens. People are like, oh, it's probably whatever, it's corny. <laughs> but then they're like, oh no, like you can rap. And it's like, well, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's why we're trying to do it, so. Why do you feel that people put that box on anything that pertains to gospel when it comes to music? I think, uh, I think a lot of times because they just haven't been exposed to stuff that's dope that has that label and they just make assumptions about it. You know, often it's not like there's never been any bad stuff like Christian rappers who are not good. And sometimes they hear one corny thing or they like one time their pastor tried to rap in a sermon one time and they was like, this is what that means. And they just kind of put everything in that category. But I think a lot of times it's because people haven't been exposed to dope stuff. And once they are, then they can throw out their assumptions and actually, you know, judge it based on what it is. So I feel like I want to make music good enough that I can say like, no, just give it a chance and listen to it. And I think it'll change your mind and you'll be able to rock with it. So. Right. Yeah. Now, before we get into the awards and the billboards <laughs> and the charts, I want to take it all the way back to your roots in Dallas. Yeah, so yeah. talk to us about what it was like for you growing up in Dallas. Yeah, grew up in Dallas, and I, you know, I moved back to Dallas about four years ago. But uh, yeah, I love growing up in Dallas. Um, grew up there with both parents. Dallas is like a, uh, it's interesting. I mean, not that different Atlanta in some ways, where it's like a really churchy place, and so, you know, everybody just kind of assumed everybody was Christians, and it was like just kind of part of the culture in a way. At least when I was growing up, and that was like a, that was like a weird way. It kind of shaped how I thought about being a Christian. I didn't really know what that meant. I was like, well, I don't know this dude who like lives this way and he says he's a Christian and this dude lives this way. I don't really know if you just show up at church sometimes. So that was part of it for me was like in such a place where everybody, I had to for myself discover, oh, what does that mean to actually be a Christian and to really follow God? And, for, um, and that's where, you know, my life changed when I was like 14, 15, when I really understood for myself and made it like, you know, what, I, I need a savior. And so I'm gonna I'm follow hard after Jesus. And then that changed everything for me. Um, and I love that. I feel like it shaped who I am as an artist. I think that's why I sound like this. I think that's why uh, I was into, like the music that I loved, I love super lyrical stuff, East Coast stuff, but also I'm like, I grew up in Dallas, so I'm listening to Swish House and Houston stuff that's popping, and I love Southern stuff, so I'm loving Outkast and Atlanta stuff that's popping, and I think it has made me into the, the artist I am and made my music sound like it does, and, and I love that. Now, you mentioned at 14 is when you really like started to discover like Christ. Yeah. At 14, that's a yeah. very early age. Yeah, you know, right. most people do the wild stuff and then they come. But like, yeah. did you ever have any times where you had some wild moments or were you of, always like? Uh, of course I did. Uh, and for me, it's like, it, it was young. And some of that, I got pushback from some people with that too. Like, why you? trying to do this now, like you just supposed to mess up for a while. <laughs> it's even from like grown, grown people, like, I don't know why you're taking life serious, just wait till later. And it didn't make sense to me. It was like, but if this is like how I was made to live, why am I like, uh, why am I like hitting the snooze? But like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, so yeah, I mean, but I, I also don't want to get the impression that because I started following God at 14 that even from that point on, it's been like, and I never sinned again, and I never made another mistake, and I never, while I was never crazy, like, know, that's, that's not the I case. that's what I was kind of asking. Yeah, like, <laughs> no, that's not the case. Like, there's stuff that, even at that time, like, ways that I was in just mess, it was just relationships, where I was interacting with girls, that was really the main thing for me at that age, really, was just like, relationships, and, I, cause really at that point, only thing I cared about in my life was, I cared about, music and I cared about girls. That was pretty much it. I had already kind of stopped hooping. Like I love basketball and I still do, but at mm -hmm. this point I'm great at watching basketball and uh, giving commentary. I'm not, I'm not good, but it was because <laughs> at that time music grabbed everything and that's really all I cared about was girls and music. And so 
there was stuff that had to be worked out in me at that time. So yeah, I mean, it was, it was a lot of flailing and floundering around trying to figure it out um, in those, in some of those teen years too, for sure. And even now, it's not like, again, I'm not trying to give the impression like I'm the, a perfect person. Right. I think this is why even like when people hear Christian hip hop or something, they're like, I don't want to hear a bunch of dudes on there <laughs> judging me. And, and it's like, I, I think people think like, oh, if he's a Christian, he thinks that he got it all together and nobody else does. When really it's like, no, 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 all of us are a mess. All of us are sinners. I think for me, what it means for me to be a Christian is I am, I, I'm repentant of my sins and I'm like, I acknowledge them. and I'm mm-hmm. trying to turn away from them to Jesus and, and grow. It's not that I have it all together, but I, I am like moving constantly in a direction. Yeah, so. Now, when would you realize that you were a little bit too much with the girls? <laughs> oh, immediately though. Cause even like the reason I started going to some church stuff before I really like believed in Jesus was because for girls, really. It was like, I, I went to one thing and I was like, oh, I see some girls here. And it was to the point where like the youth pastor at the end of that retreat was like, hey, and he like gave me a book on like dating or something. I never read it, but um, yeah, it, it was bad. But um, it was pretty clear to me right after where I was like, I was starting to just look around and stuff in my life, you know? And, um, and it was a thing where it was like, I had like read the Bible before, but it never clicked to me. Like my grandmother gave me this Bible, so I called it a children's, children of color Bible, and it was like pictures in there and everybody was super black. And Solomon had dreads and Moses had braids. And, but it was a King James, so I tried to read it. I was like, I don't know what none of this says or talks about. And part of what happened is when I was like 14, I felt like my eyes opened and I'm, first of all, somebody got me a Bible in regular English. But I was reading stuff and I was like, oh, like this is real. Like this, I mean, I read something and then something happened in my life where it applied to what was happening in NXA. I was like, oh shoot, like this is, this is actually speaking to my life right now. Um, and so I started taking stock of my life. And um, yeah, it was weird to be 14 and that be where I'm at, 14, 15. It was like, my friends was like, bro, I feel like something is happening. Like, <laughs> like I'm a Christian too, but you out here trying to be a super Christian and, and um, and I'm like, what? Well, yeah, I mean, it's like people's cool until I tried to actually do what the Bible said. Then it was like, oh, hold on, slow down there. And um, so, yeah, I'm sure I was obnoxious about it sometimes, too, you know, and immature. But but yeah, it was it was interesting. I think I'm very intrigued that, you know, this happened at 14 and just how you were able to really kind of discipline yourself at such a young age. Did you ever have times where you like almost got led astray? Of course, yeah. Um, like there were things, like even the stuff that, like with girls where I was like trying to do, and it would be, for a while it was seasons where I was like, oh, doing better and then kind of fall off again. And, and I had to learn uh, not to pretend I had it all together. I had to learn to like be honest about my mistakes with people who was also trying to go in the same direction instead of trying to, I think this is again what Christians can turn people off is where it's like, try to give people the impression that we already have it all together, which is like, no, that's the whole thing is we don't have it all together. That's, that's, that's what this is. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, absolutely. And there's seasons I struggle with doubt where there's been times I'm like, is this true like I think it is? And why do I believe this? And do I believe this because it's actually true or just because it was convenient? Um, yeah, absolutely. Now, you know, we live in a whole different generation right now. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so just from your eyes, what are like some constant patterns that you're seeing with this generation of youth? Man, you know, and this even ties in to one of the songs I got on the album. It's called All Mine. And it's uh, the song is basically about how obsessed we are with our own I don't know, the lights and the camera being on us all the time that I think has always been true of everybody throughout forever, but social media just really, it's like everybody got their own reality show in a unique way now um, that I think really shapes how, you know, like kids, I don't know, I, I was talking to, I don't remember even where I was, but I, I was talking to some kids, I was like, what do you, like, what you do on the weekend? They're like, we just stay at the crib. I'm like, you don't ever like go, and it seems like there's a whole lot of like people stay at the crib because there's so much being locked into the phone that like, like when me and my homie wanted to hang, like we was like, oh, let's go to the mall, let's show some girls or something. But it was like, nah, I mean, if I can just interact right here, I think there are unique ways that 
So this song, All Mine, basically, is just in some ways I'm talking about how I think we kind of warped our minds a little bit and everything is like building our brand and everybody is trying to be a super influencer. And I'm like, everybody's not an influencer, okay? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like I got friends and I like look up and they're like, yeah, so what you want to do is you want to do the curls. I'm like, fam, you started working out last week, bro. Like, why are you doing this? <laughs> yeah. But I think there's ways it like changes what we value in ways that's not always super healthy to me. Um, so that's one thing that I'm like, I I'm curious about how, what, what that's going to mean for this next generation that they really haven't known the world without that being their main way of interacting with people. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's a really good perspective because, you know, when we were younger, we were outside on the bike, right. climbing trees. That's right. Just like living. But yeah. now, you know, they got the i babies got the iPads. Look, my kids, I, I, got, I have three kids. My, my son is now my daughter's seven, and I have another son who's one. Uh, my, my youngest is one, so he's not in school. But they, it's like they're the only ones without phones in that whole class. Everybody got phones, they got their phones at school. I'm like, I'm not gonna hand the whole internet to my seven year old just to, you know, just have, <laughs> it's like, I can't even control myself from being on my phone all the time. What, how, how am I expecting my seven year old, my nine year old to? So, it, um, I feel the pull on myself, which probably made me want to write that song is like, I, I just want us to examine how we, how we do that stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah. Now, I know that you really started your rap career in high school. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, did you sign your first deal in high school? I did. Wow, so I kind of know what she's talking about today. <laughs> talk to us about that journey with that. Yeah, um, it felt like um, it felt like a dream come true for real for me because I've been wanting to rap for a long time. So even before I was a Christian, I mean, again, I'm young, but you know, I was like 12. I was rapping. My rap name was Lil Will. You know, I was I don't even know I was rapping about girls and how I'm the greatest. I had braces, so it wasn't very gangster. Uh, and so, and then I kind of changed on rapping about it a little bit, but I always wanted to rap. Me and my friends would rap together, and I was like, I think I'm better than y'all, and I would be part of these groups, or maybe freestyle battle and stuff at lunch. Um, but I was always, it was harder to record music at that time too. It, it sounded like a long time ago, but it's so easy now that you don't really need a full studio. You can just record the crib, all of that, and that, that wasn't the case right away when I was a teenager. Um, so anyway, uh, it was like a dream come true. Like I get to I have a, a, a record label to sign me and I, it's like a budget for my albums. And we like, we buying real beats. I ain't just downloading stuff off the internet to rap on. And it really did feel like a, a dream come true. And because, because of how I, what I was rapping about too, I don't even know where I thought it was gonna lead to honestly. Like, I don't, I don't know if I thought this was gonna be my career for my whole life. And I was gonna like have a fan of ride my family and travel around the world and get to do all this cool stuff. Um, so it's been, it's been dope, you know, I, I think that made, that made the pursuit of it pretty pure. It was like, this ain't really to try to get rich and famous because I don't think people having a lot of success doing this particular thing. And so it's cool how stuff has turned out. So how did the record label even catch buzz to you? So, uh, there was a rapper that I liked, um, named Truth and he came and rapped somewhere. My friend's dad, um, Kurt Franklin, we, he took, he was always trying to get us on, on stuff. So um, he took us to the show. So we got to go backstage we were Kurt mm -hmm. Franklin. And so he, he introduces us, but who opened for Truth that night was Lecrae, Tadashi, Shobaraka. I had never heard him before, nobody had. It's 2003 or four. And, Ooh, uh, this was the early, two. this was like when Pharrell and them was having their run. That's right, yeah. So it was like way, way, way. And so then, um, so that's how I met them, and I was like, they're dope. And I was like, oh, I'm rapping in my church. Y'all want to come open for me? I don't even know why they did that. It was like a terrible mixtape I recorded in my room. They were like, sure. <laughs> and they came for free. Uh, it was just a simpler time. We was like, you love God and hit by me too. And so they came, and then we just built a relationship. They was like, oh, is anybody like mentoring you? And uh, yeah, and so I, you know, at that time, I'm 15, 16 years old. They at that time, they in college. And so I was about 10 years younger than everybody else. Uh, um, so yeah, and then just kind of hung around for a little bit, and then uh, yeah, when I was in high school, that's that's when I signed the record deal. So it did. It was like after school, after algebra class and track practice, I went to the studio to record my album. It just felt like wow. this is like dream come true type stuff. And I was like, nah, bro, I can't go tomorrow. I have to go to the studio. 
Um, you talking like that at, at your know, high school. Wow. So what are your friends saying? Like they think, I mean, they're really excited for me. They think it's amazing. Um, uh, you know, and some of that is also like at this point, by the time I'm senior high school, it's been a few years of like, oh, trip is. So I never had anything where people was like, I don't rock with you anymore. You got weird. But it was like sometimes they're like, oh, we're going to hit this party and I'm not going to be there and we're going to be doing this. Then I'd be like, I'm, I'm good. I pass. So there was like people were used to me doing my own thing sometimes because I wasn't always down with, with mm -hmm. all this stuff. And again, they also knew this is what Trip is fighting for. And I like Trip is perfect. But um, but they were, you know, crazy excited for me, too. And, you know, it was, uh, yeah, all my classmates was, yeah, I mean, it was crazy. It, it was a dream come true for real. And, uh, yeah. And, you know, my daughter, so my daughter loves music. She wants to be an artist. She's seven, but I think Aww. she got the sauce, stuff. <laughs> she's like, and I, I'm going to make an album, and I'm going to put it out when I'm a teenager. And I was like, well, it don't always work out like that. That's just kind of how it worked out, but, yeah. Now, what would you say were some major sacrifices that you had to take throughout your journey as an artist? Sacrifices, what, what kind of sacrifices? I would just say, like, it, whether it's, like, life sacrifices. Yeah. I mean, being an artist, I think people, um, I think because it's a fun thing and it seems glamorous, people don't realize the kind of work that goes into it. And there's some unique things about an artist's lifestyle that are good, but it's pros and cons and stuff. Like, some people love being on the road all the time. I don't love being on the road all the time. When I go places to do a show, it's like, um, you don't always get to, like, just enjoy the city. Because sometimes people are like, oh, but you've been, I know you've been there, because I'm like, Bro, I went, I got there, I went to the hotel and I went to the show and then I left the next day. Um, there's some ways that like I'm a homebody sometimes where it's like, yeah. Um, but also it's like, you're not on the same schedule as everybody else. So sometimes you don't tell people forget you exist for a few months till you pop back up. You're like, well, I didn't get invited. It was like, I thought you was gone, bro. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's unique things about being an artist, but there's also like a flexibility and I feel very grateful. This is my seventh project. And I'm, I'm not even that old. It's just like my seventh project because I've been doing it for so long. And it's like, I've got to do the seventh time. Like, write songs that I came up with in my head and make them and send out to the world. And like, I remember when I was uh, a long time ago, we was in uh, Kenya for uh, Unashamed Tour of Africa. And I came out for my set and we was in Nairobi. And it was like, I don't know, that one, maybe it was like 10,000 people and they were singing every single word to this particular song. And it's one of the moments that's like, oh shoot, like this song I wrote in my bedroom that day is a song that's had an impact on all these people. And I try, I got on this 18 hour flight to go across the world. Um, that's the kind of stuff that's like, it's a privilege to do this, you know? And so I'm, I'm very grateful that I've, that I've gotten to. And um, yeah, there's a lot about it that's really cool. And I think, and please don't find offense to this, nah. but I find it very amazing that like you and Lecrae have been able to stay relevant so long, yeah. especially with, you know, not rapping about what yeah. is popular. Yeah. So what would you say really is like, I don't even want to say the cause of it, but how are, were you guys able to still stay relevant up until now? Yeah, I, this is nothing I consider a gift because I can think of a lot of people who, it's hard for, for people to still be interested in you after a long period of time. So that's one is, um, I think part of it is people love the music and they also love what we stand for and it means a lot to them. So that it's more than just, oh, I rock with these songs. It's like, no, but I rock with this dude. He's missing to me or he's inspired me. Or, you know, people come to me and said, I was in this season where I was so low, I was suicidal. I listened to that song and it made me not take my life that day. And so when someone's had that impact, they are gonna rock with somebody forever. You know what I'm saying? Um, the other thing is, in different ways, both me and Cray um, work really hard to make sure we don't sound like we've been doing music forever. Like, there's some ways where hip hop is such a changing, a quick changing off from like, there's some ways it was like, I have to learn how to rewrite verses. Flows right. are changing, cases are changing. So I have to be able to keep up with that. And for me, that takes studying and hard work. Um, so even when I was like playing this album for Cray, he was like, 
I didn't expect it to sound this amazing because you ain't been doing nothing. I didn't know, like, he was like, he was like, no, no, like, I knew you was, and I knew it was going to be good, but I didn't know it was going to sound so, and I was like, well, yeah, it take, it's like I'm trying to stay on top of stuff. So going back to high school, yeah. how were you able to really build up your buzz as an artist to where you're selling out crowds to like 10,000 people? Um, well, that's the thing is, was like, we were all starting at the same time. Um, me, Craig, Tadashi, Shobaraka at that time. That's who dudes on Reach were. Um, and honestly, sometimes people be like, tell me how you did it, I wanna be where you at. And it's like, I couldn't tell you if I tried because it doesn't make sense. Honestly, it's like, it wasn't like we did this, then this, then this, and all these moves worked exactly as we planned them. This is not the case. We was like, let's make amazing music. Let's talk about what we're passionate about. Let's try to change, change lives and let's try to make music so amazing people can't deny it. And we also, the dope thing about starting all together is we would be like, don't put that song on y'all, bro, that sucks. I remember I played a, it was on tour and I played a song I really liked for everybody. And Lecrae was like, bro, if we put that song out, I'll, I'll, I'll disown you. I, I was like, bro, <laughs> you don't have to say that publicly in front of all our friends. And, uh, but part of it is like, we always uh, are trying to keep each other um, kind of on point and help each other get good. And honestly, I think people just connected with it in a deep way. I mean, you know what it's like when you, when it's just a song, you're like, oh, that's dope, maybe I'll save it. When there's something that's like, I never heard nothing like this, you like, you share it with people. You're like, I don't know if you heard this, but this is amazing. And I think people just kept wanting to share it and it had an impact on people. And so the more people found out, the more those people just kind of shared it. Because here's the thing, like, it's not like Christian radio played our music or gospel radio played our music and hip hop radio didn't play our music. It was too hip hop for Christian radio, it was too Christian for hip hop radio, in their minds at least. And so. It's not, we didn't have none of those traditional streams. Um, and I, I think it really just was people connected with on such a deep level um, that yeah, it just kind of spread. And so it feels like, yeah, I couldn't tell you how it happened, but I'm grateful to be, be part of it. And this brings me to the topic of purpose. Yeah. In your perspective, how do you know when something is your purpose? Yeah, that's a hard question. Um, Cause I think there could be like a big picture purpose, like what, I actually think sometimes we stress ourselves out trying to nail down a very specific purpose that we think we're supposed to find, but sometimes it's like, we think about it too hard. Cause sometimes it's like, should I take this job? Cause it's my purpose to be a graphic designer or is my purpose to be a journal or whatever. And it's like, um, sometimes I think it would be more helpful to be like, to think broader, like all of us are made in the image of God and, you know, grace commandment, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. And so sometimes I'm like, hey bro, if you take that job, will, will you be enabled to, like how are you gonna be able to love your neighbor if you do that job? Like if you do that, maybe that particular job is actually not gonna be really helpful for the people in that community. Maybe you should take this one because you'll be able to love your neighbor better than you'd be able to in that, that particular thing. I think in general, I, it's not always helpful to try to zoom in on like one specific, because then sometimes what happens is when that thing don't work out, we don't know what to do with ourselves. That's because it's like, thing. oh, my purpose was, I'm gonna just make something up. My purpose was, you know, being a rapper, say, and it didn't work out for me. Then I'm lost as a person. I don't know what to do because I thought that was my only purpose. And I think, as even like some of the stuff with like the end is it's like, just because our particular plan, the way we planned it out doesn't work out, doesn't mean that like, Oh, so we're done. We don't have any purpose. There's no impact we can have on the world. You know, there's nothing, there's no way we can impact people. It's like, no, that thing didn't work out. But we come up with a thing and then we write this version of our life story and we're like, no, it has to play out exactly like this. And if anything goes wrong, we don't know what to do with ourselves. And I think um, it'd be better to think more broadly about what does it look like to uh, live the way I was made to live? And then where do I see opportunities where I can do that best? Um, because then when a particular thing doesn't work out, you can think, okay, why well, I gotta, you know, it's like when you go off course on your Google Maps, and it's like rerouting, it's like, all right, well, I gotta figure out another way, so, yeah. Now we have to dive into your 2020 album. Yeah. That's like my favorite album. Thank so you. we gotta yeah. talk about that and yeah. what that meant for you at that time, creating that project. Yeah, 2020, that was my second album. Um, and I, I was in college and 2020 was like, it was like, okay, I've made an album now. I know how that goes. And I really was in my head, I was like, I'm gonna try to make the greatest album of all time. Which sometimes it's like, that's where I'm 
how I'm driven, where I'm like, I want to make something nobody's ever heard. I want to, so, so anyway, that was, that was one that I think still connects people in a lot of ways. Like Superstar yes. was the first, that was the first time, now I know this ain't a thing anymore, but that was the first time I had a video played on 106 in Park, my Real Vision videos. I was like, we got videos played on 106 in Park, <laughs> we out here. Um, and that was also a time where we were starting to get some looks from various places where it was like, all right, if we keep doing this, we can be true to ourselves and not compromise who we are. Um, but still try to make stuff that's so dope that, that people can recognize what we're doing. So. And if I'm not mistaken, that one actually charted on the billboard. Yeah, yeah, that, that was that too. And I didn't think that was ever going to happen. That's the thing is I, I didn't expect to ever have anything hit any billboard chart anywhere. And so it was like, oh, all right, I guess we're doing something. So, yeah. Now, you know, when you're an artist and, you know, you're making it real big, you're selling out shows, you're charting, it could get to your head sometimes yeah, and yeah. you could kind of, you know, act up on it. So how were you able to really stay humble? Man, uh, part of it was for me trying to stay around people that's not super impressed with me all the time. Like, because. Oh, wow. Could you break that down? Yeah, like. If you follow me on social, the things that I post on social, because I don't just be on social all the time. So it's like this album thing. It's like these fly photo shoots, these videos that look dope and all of this stuff. And you can get a picture of me that is only one part of me. I'm not trying to give a false picture of me, but it's only that side of me. And, and if I go to shows, I sign autographs, take pictures. All of those people are there because they are impressed by something I'm doing. When I go home, my wife is impressed by stuff I do, but she knows the whole me. So it's like, she also knows the stuff that I don't do well. She knows my weaknesses. She knows that every now and then I forget to take the trash out on Monday night, and that's annoying, you know what I'm saying? Like, she knows <laughs> yeah. that when we getting ready to go somewhere, sometimes I don't give myself enough time, and then that makes us late. So it's like, it's very easy to have an inflated view of yourself, to think you are the greatest thing of all time, when everyone you talk to all the time also thinks you're the greatest person of all time. But I've tried to make it a point to make sure I have a lot of people who I spend time around a lot who appreciate what I do, but are not overly impressed with, with me. And it, it keeps me, um, again, grateful for the gift, but not putting myself in some special category of human. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, just sitting here, you are very humble. Like, you are really humble. Like, if you would see you, you would not think that the <laughs> success that you have had yeah. over the years, like, you'd be like, oh, dang, you did that for yeah, real? I but that. I like that. That's really dope. I appreciate that. Now, I do want to ask you, out of all of your projects that you dropped, which one would you say took a lot out of you? Mm. Um... Do you mean like it was hard to make? Like hard it was just to really make, hard work? like you were going through emotions. I mean, this one would be one, you know, this one, uh, you know, again, like there's stuff about the last few years that's been hard. You know, one thing was like me and my wife thought we was done with kids and the right before everything locked down. It was like, no, nope, actually you're not. Here's another one, right? So it was like, oh, and then the next week the world shut down. So it's like, oh, wow. Now we got a newborn and we can't take, ain't nobody to help babysit, you know what I'm saying? And then um, I had some stuff with my health that went really downhill where I felt the worst I felt in a long time. And I had to like take time off of work. I couldn't really do nothing. And then we was trapped in a house, you know, kids. I, my kids are very well behaved, but kids is kids. You're just stuck in that, you know, and so, even like making this project, this stuff about it, that was really hard. And there were times like, I thought this project was gonna come out before the end of last year. Mm -hmm. Body quit on me, I wasn't able to, to get it done. Um, um, and so it did take a lot out of me. It was really hard to get it to the finish line. I wasn't really sure if I would sometimes, but it was like, I'm just praying for the energy to, when I got that energy to just go. Um, so yeah, this one did take a lot out of me, but it's, uh, I think the album reflects that. I don't like when music makes it sound like all of life is just, well, it's just a highlight reel. Like, here's all the great things that happened, this great thing happened, I did this, I did that the other day, I'm riding around in this, it's like, that, nobody's life is like that. That's not what nobody's life is like. I especially hate when Christians do that. It's like, oh, everything happy all the time, and if it is bad, we can't acknowledge it, or that's bad. Right. It's like, that's why people don't rock with us sometimes, because it feels fake. And I'm like, I want my music to be like, no, I, God is really good, but life is also really hard, and we can be honest about both of those things at the same time. And part of how I get through life being really hard is remembering God's really good, and he, he's doing something even if I don't see it. 
Yeah. Now, speaking on this project, I want to talk to you about your lyrics in Supernatural. Yeah, yeah. You stated, and this one stuck out to me the most, yeah. you stated that, um, hold up, it's in my notes. Yeah. I wish hip hop didn't root killers. So talk to us about what those lyrics mean to you. Yeah, so um, it was, uh, I wish the forbidden fruit was bitter. I wish we all would get banned for Twitter. I wish hip hop didn't root for killers. I wish police didn't shoot to kill us. Um, I think uh, every now and then, like, you know, we listen to music so much that Especially where, like, you know, we talk about the same stuff in songs over and over. Sometimes you don't really even peep what's being said sometimes. It's just kind of like, ah, I rock with this song. And even when it'd be like a dope punchline about killing somebody, we'd be like, ooh! And, um, and yet, uh, every now and then I'll listen to something and for a second it's almost like I'm able to, like, step back and be like, yeah, like, we really are rapping about killing people a lot. You know what I'm saying? And yet when that actually happens and it hits close to home, it's not fun and games. And, um, and sometimes, though I know uh, for a lot of dudes, hip hop's just a sport or it's talking about stuff they've seen or just saying stuff that is just what dudes are saying. Um, everybody don't always know that. And I think there's some stuff that, whether or not we're trying to, that gets glorified sometimes. Like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and when kids take it seriously and like it's shit. This is the thing I would fight with about my dad because he would be he didn't like me listening to hip hop a lot when I was younger. He was like, oh, "All these thugs, I fought hard to get out the hood so you wouldn't have to be in that." And and now you got this picture of Pac on your wall, is this thug life tattered on his chest and all that. And I was like, "But dad, you know, I'm not gonna kill nobody. It's just because I like his music." Um, but I think what I didn't understand was like there was like some values that I was beginning to take from music, like um, Jay Z, Jermaine Dupri, the song. Uh, um, uh, Highway switching four lanes, top down, screaming out, money ain't a thing. Like, it'd be songs like that where it'd be like, oh, shoot. And it started to shape what I wanted to chase after, what I thought was cool. And I think it's dudes who see rappers, bunch of guns and videos, and dudes do this on social media. It's like, bro, don't do that, first of all. You um, don't put that on social media, but also it's like, that's not, that's not cool. That's not dope. Like, my, my, there's a kid who went to school with my son when we lived here who got shot the, um, last week. And oh, me and my wow. wife just told him about that um, the day before I left. And my wife asked me, she was like, you know, do you think we should tell him, you know, it's like, but I, I want him to know what the world is actually like, even though this is not somebody he's, he's home with in a long time. And it's like, um, yeah, it's like a nine-year-old kid got shot by a teenager. And it's like, that's not, that's not the stuff we want to just be filling the ears and the minds of our people with at all times. I do think when you're mature, you can delineate what's, what's art and what's life, but um, I just don't think it, it, it's, I, I don't think it's healthy. I don't think it's dope, and I would love for there to be, now some people talk about it in a nuanced way, you know what I'm saying? Like, ah, oh, this is just what's happened. I'm not trying to glorify this, but um, I think we can do better. I, I especially think hip-hop can do better in how we talk about women. I, I think, I'm like, I'm waiting for that revolution to happen where we like, okay, this is not cool, y'all. Like, you just can't just have a bunch of dudes who are fully dressed and just like no woman in the video has, it gets to be. It's like, you, why, we can't just like have women just be just props in a video and dudes get to be full human beings and women just have to be like a pro I, I think there's some stuff I'm like, I, I'm waiting for us to get tired of, of the way we do some things in hip hop. Um, and so my goal isn't to be like, I'm, I do everything right, get like me. But it is like, I, I think we can do better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I think, I think, um, I think that, you know, this generation is so much music. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, uh, how do I put this? Dang, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. I just feel like this generation is more tuned in to the artists yeah. now more than ever. That's right. Yeah. To where, like, the influence is ridiculous That's right. and it's a very powerful force because it's not just i like that song it's like i feel like i interact with this person every day on social because i see when they at the mall shop or whatever kind of stuff is getting posted um yeah, you got the op right. talk you yeah, got yeah. it's That's a lot right. of stuff going That's on right. <laughs> and even like seeing my kids how they just come like my son be coming home talking about stuff and using slang wrong i'm like you don't even know what you're talking about but there's such a like what I see and think is cool, I just kind of take that on. Um, when we look, we all do that, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I, I'm just like, just want us to be wise. I think we can do better. Now, yeah. would you say that was kind of like one of the inspirations with this project? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it always is for me. Like, I, I'm always aware that there's a lot in hip hop that I think is the norm that shouldn't be. And a lot of times it's like, I want to lead by example. So like, instead of talking about women crazy, I got a song on my album called Know It, where I'm talking about, where I'm just kind of talking about how dope my wife is in light of it really we talking, I'm talking about the, 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 our son who was just born and how it was kind of hard to get that news because we weren't expecting it, but then just the amazing way she flowed through that, it's like, I still don't get it, can't do push-ups, still better weight of a village. <laughs> you can't take tattoo pain, but you labor for 1,200 minutes. Like, there's some amazing stuff about what I've seen in my wife in this past couple years to, to do a hardship that I'm like, I, I want to, this, this is the way I want to talk about women and how amazing they are, and, and I want to set a good example, you know. So it's not always calling stuff out like that one line. Sometimes it's trying to set a better example and hoping that, yeah, that it'll, it'll catch on. Or at least shape how a young man sees women in the world, or shape how a group of young people think about them, what they value, and, and how they think about that stuff. Now we got to get into the creative direction of Stone, because you yeah. was hanging out the car and everything. Right. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> What was up with that? I mean, that's one of the that is one of the dope things about being a rapper, being an artist is sometimes you get to just make stuff that you think is dope. You know, when I was um, the song is like about you know life here and perfect. Um, you know, I'm I'm not a, this ain't my final home, and so it's like I'm on a journey. So I'm in a car, I'm in this train, uh, on this bus, um, and the director was like, "Hey, we want you to hang out the window on this part." It was cold that day too, so it was like it was so cold my mouth was barely moving when I was trying to rap, but. Uh, but yeah, it was it was fun. It was it was a dope video. Yeah. Now you have one out the gate that's releasing Friday. That's right. And if I'm not mistaken, it's like four of y'all of you. <laughs> Three of me. Three of you. Yeah. So talk about that and what that means to you. Yeah. So. It went through, um, so Right Out The Gate is the last one, and all three of the videos from the album, Supernatural, Stone, and Right Out The Gate, they kind of tied together. So those two, like the younger me and then the old me are both in it. And it kind of ties into the end where it's like, um, every end is a new beginning. Um, where there's different phases of life that we're in. Um, and sometimes um, when one phase ends, we think it's the end of the world, but really, um, when a door closes, you know, we, we praying there's another door that opens where we can go through that and be faithful. So it's just kind of a way to show these different seasons. Every end is a, is a new beginning. And the project officially drops tomorrow. That's right. All right. So March 4th. which one is your favorite track on that one? Uh, I had to say right now it's probably it's probably Stone right now. Probably stone, but I, it'll change once I hear the stuff that people love. Like sometimes people love the ones you didn't know they were gonna love, and it's like oh, that one is the kind of dope. So, yeah. Wow. So before we wrap up, do you have any advice for the youth and just how they should not they should just really just like a rule of life book or something like that? Um. One thing that I would encourage is, and this was something that I think was helpful for me at the time, is like, um, when you're thinking about who you are right now, um, do your best to try to look beyond what's happening right now at this moment and then in this exact day, you know? Because um, for me, even like deciding like, oh, I'm a follow God and I was a teenager, it was like, maybe it would seem stupid if the only way I'm making a decision is am I gonna have more fun Friday night if I'm following God or if I'm not? But there's a lot of, there's also a lot of things, um, and again, I haven't been perfect at all, but there's a lot of ways that I'm like, I see where I would have went. Like I see the direction my life would have went in. Um, and by God's grace, he, he helped me to see beyond just what was happening in that exact moment and, and think about where I was headed. So I would encourage, I would encourage people to like, yeah, I mean, think about what you were made for. And if you were made for something more than just like, Again, it's not like we don't have fun, but it's like if, if fun isn't the only thing our life is about, then there's no point in waiting to figure out what that other stuff is and to begin going and going in that direction. And um, for me, it's like, okay, I know God made me to look like him, love him, love neighbor. I want to start on that path now. And, um, and yeah, I, I don't regret it for a single second. There's stuff I've had to turn away from. There's, there's stuff that I've had to sacrifice, but 
I feel like I've only received much better things in return, even when it's tough. Yeah. He's coming in blue. Can't keep my feet up because I ain't home. You can tell him put that in stone.